So we want to take this time and go back. We're going to go back in history. Possibly the year 2014. I'm Shine Wisdom, the host of Emerald Mystery Radio Studios with Sky. It's Sky and Wisdom. 2014, I was battling a lot of entities that were conjured up in order to make my circumstance a lot difficult for me. And I'm going to take you through that journey tonight. Welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 57. And we are grateful to be here. September 28th, 2023. So I was told to go back over my journey and to tell a little bit more about my spiritual journey on the path to becoming Dr. Darina Shine. So I went back to... Emerald Mystery Radios, when we have the studio in my upstairs home office, and I had not connected to anyone regarding, you know, brick and mortar buildings, Uh, Youngstown Community Center was nowhere near being thought about at this time, but we still had that empowerment. And what I did during this time, and you can go back to Emerald Mystery Radio and look up the manifestation. Uh, I want to say I called them, not chronicles, at that time I called them decrees. That's what it was. So I had these 13 decrees that I followed diligently while waiting on bond five years to decide what fate was going to befall me because of a night that I can't remember. And it was, it was valuable as an entrepreneur. It was extreme. It gave my, my, my case March 23rd, 2011, literally gave me the push. It reawakened my life. And that's where the decrees showed up. So I'm fighting and battling with these forces around me. I'm not knowing that it is a spiritual warfare on my mind, on my physical body, on my emotion, but I know that I get up every day and I know that there is an assignment and I know that I'm supposed to be doing something. So what it was, was just the opening and YouTube at this point, Facebook at this point provided me the outlet necessary. Shout out to Sky from Emerald Mystery Radio, you know, for being as passionate about recording the episodes and showing me to go back and revisit to find my growth. And so that's what I did. I found the growth. And sometimes the growth is not always as powerful as we believe they could be. You know, at this time, there was a lot of enemies who sat at the table that I thought were friends. There were a lot of people that I thought were on the team. But they weren't on the team. They were literally waiting for the fall. They were waiting for the slip. You know, when you're walking a catwalk and you are the model, the supermodel, and you have your heels on and you have, you know, your um, 
Stacy Adams on if you're a male and you're walking the walkway and your enemies are literally hoping for the downfall while you're shining. You're absolutely shining at that time. The weight, the suspense. That's where the Judiths show up. And so you want to know about the journey in between challenge while still running a business, continual court sessions daily, weekly, monthly, over $5,000 worth of parking expenses, almost $1,000 a year. Those were profound times in an entrepreneurial period that was supposed to be so valuable to me. But it was valuable, unnecessary, unneeded, but definitely valued. Because at that time, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, you could not tell me that the people sitting at my table were the Judases. You could not tell me that. Not everyone. But the ones that I always believed in that would guide me and direct me, you know, So I created, I created these decrees to hold myself accountable so that I knew that when things were turning a different way, I would not fall apart. I didn't even realize that I was doing the decrees for that reason. So I started to write these decrees and put them into action. And I promised myself that I would make it a point to stay consistent no matter who showed up and who smiled and who gave and who needed my support. I needed to know what to do. So the spirit of discernment showed up during this time within those decrees. And I mean, if you go back, I think I'll put the link in this video in the description box below. But if you go back, over 18,000 people saw that video. And I felt empowered by that. Almost a decade almost a decade of the struggle of trying to stay correct while walking in silence so that others would not know what the next move would be to try to sabotage and destroy. And I put that into the decree and that's the walk in which I walk today. And you can hear it in the Chronicles of a Nonprofit. This is where it strives, it comes from. You know, I went back over that video just recently. And there were so many forces that were trying to stop me. But those forces were forces in which I knew. They were very comforting. I don't know if it was ancestral energy or if it was just the spiritual vibes because my senior advisor, I talk with him a lot, and Juan says that there are no demons. They're spirits that have been here and the way that they lived when they were here is the same exact way that they live while still here. <laughs> And while still being here, they don't even know that they've changed 
or needed to grow. So they continue to, to probe and manipulate the mindsets of those who have no idea about spirituality. And that's needed in business, that's needed in basic functioning of everyday life, and it's also needed in leadership. So going back to these decrees, I, it was as though I was writing a poetic writing, but what I did in the writing was I slayed those who were not of my good. But by slaying them, what I did also was I manifested that they would they would empower me through whatever journey I was about to face. Super amazing. Like the enemy became the footstool in which I needed to relax and embrace and enjoy. And they became my biggest supporters. They became my genuine leaders. In this leadership, what happens is they're not at the table with me. They're manning the camp. And in manning the camp, what they did was they allowed me the opportunity to continue to make money while waiting on bond, keep my mind in the right state of thought. When my son was going through his mental situations, when my daughter was moving into her adulthood, and also my youngest was moving into her maturity as well, and leadership style. All this was happening at the same time of lack of employment, but yet money was always coming through. About maybe four or five years after my mom's passing, grandmother's passing, my father's passing, and then it excelled into graduation, divorce, everything in life that could have happened, happened during this time that I was decreeing success upon my life. And I continue to do that on a day-to-day basis. And if you go back to Emerald Mystery Radio in 2000 and... Hmm, Let me see. I want to say 2009. I want to say even earlier than that. Let me see here. You might hear my um, waterfall. God, so many years ago. So, so many years ago. But Emerald saved my life. And I'm back there in the mindset of going back and looking at what I was doing because there's a there's a void there. You know, if you're constantly being challenged in the criminal justice system, at a time when everything else is happening or everything has just happened. A lot of that plays a role in your life. It makes you feel like something is, there's a void that you can't remember. So going back over that and really revalidating my life and saying to myself, oh my God, in the midst of all that, I kept my sanity. In the midst of all that, I kept my business. In the midst of all that, I was helping entrepreneurs help themselves, even at a time when everything was all chaotic in my world. And to this day, 
the Chronicles have now replaced the Emerald Mystery Radio because the empowerment on a spiritual basis is where Emerald started and now inspiring people with the Chronicles of a Nonprofit and Business is looking at the highs and lows and the choices we make as entrepreneurs. So that means we have grown fantastically and genuinely without the help of the Most High and without the decrees that I've prepared for my life in a journey in which I was following for myself. Those decrees helped me to move where I am right now. Wow. You know, I just got to let that sink in. Because there was a time I was told that I was facing 34 years of life at the age of 30-something, 35, 39, somewhere around there. And then a whole whirlwind, a whole hurricane, karma came, knocked on the door and said, you're going to come with me now. (laughs) And I had to go. But it wasn't 34 years. It was only a blink of an eye. And now I am back. I am wiser. I'm stronger. I'm more persevered. I'm more impacted. And I'm more passionate than I ever was in my life while waiting on life to change for me, maybe for the best, maybe not. But at that time, it was a gamble that I chose to appreciate and accept. And I used every single day during the five-year fight, not knowing if the day was the day to continue to excel and be the ultimate best that I could be. So when people ask me, Why, how do I gain all this material possessions? And people are watching and they're amazed at what they see, but they don't understand how it happened when it was right in plain sight. My life was right in plain sight. And it still is. But everyone can't get to me. Everyone can't sit at the table and be a potential Judas. They cannot do that anymore. And I'm talking about feeding people that I thought truly was for my good. Feeding them greatly. Providing the table prepared with the cornucopia and the corn and the the rice and the the meat and the juice, the wine, the everything, anything that a feast could provide. I was given that and I gave it away. And this is another reason why there is success in my life at this moment. Not to judge me, not to sit up here and try to, how can I put it, size me up, because you'll never know. You'll never know what it is I'm doing on the success path until it has shown success. And that's what I, that's what I preach in my entrepreneurial practices here at Nonprofit. Chronicles of the Nonprofit. So back to the decrees. Man, (laughs) as I listen tonight, it almost felt as though I did not recognize that woman. But I remember that woman, Shine Wisdom. 
Shine Wisdom Publishing, self-publishing, because I felt why purchase a publisher to take 50% of the proceeds of what my passion is when I can self-publish my own work and sell that work and be fruitful, plentiful, and multiply. Multiply to the degree where I know that it's worth it. You know, think about it. As an entrepreneur, the very thing, the only thing that we have is our experience. And when we manifest things for our lives, and this is what I talked about in the manifestation, I'm going to let you hear a brief introduction. Let me see here. It was super awesome. And these decrees, whoo, super amazing, super amazing. Let's take a listen. Greetings, and welcome to Skills to Success, LLC. And today is July the 22nd, 2014. And the topic I'm discussing tonight happens to do with spiritually assisting in your own success. Now, I was recently asked by an email to explain in daily words, part one to my 13 mental decrees. And if you look back over my videos, you'll see I have 13 of them. So I'm gonna go through the first. And when I talk about it, um, I begin to write this article as a means to suggest options and to get one out of themselves to think for self on how um, you will play a significant role in your own success. This is a journey, you know. So I created uh, an example of what I mean. And so I'm going to stay on track because I printed up documents. <laughs> so to use an example of what I'm trying to speak tonight, we'll have to go through how I do it. Just basic, just putting it into words. So I'm going to relax and explain and take you through by providing within a meditative form exactly how I go about using my first decree. I shine wisdom will assist my universal creator in a number of ways necessary for my physical growth as a higher thinker of self on my behalf and its behalf. The ability to rotate through this life without needing to touch illusion, which surrounds us, should be the key to all inner lightenment. I like that, inner light and interlightenment. That's the inner light within which is how we view our world through our unique circumstances. So we create our own heaven or hell right here on earth. Okay, an example. I will use the movie, The Village. It's a 2004 psychological thriller showing how a blind young woman went out on a quest for medicine to heal someone who could see. So I asked some questions on that. Why do some people hold keys to a city? What does that mean?
How can people hold privileges to certain rights? Who gives them these rights? And finally, what do we know about universal laws? Now for me, universal laws are standards that are protected within holistic rights. Meaning as we know how the universe works, we begin to find solutions to our physical situations. And as I meet beings here on planet Earth, I review how they respond to me based on his or her own purpose-driven instincts. See, they actually show me the reason why they came in the first place on the physical level. There is nothing else that can be created except our perceptions. So that means no matter where we are, if we pay close attention to exactly what we manifest when we intuitively say, my intuition got me feeling some kind of way, that's when everything begins to click and the reasons and the purpose behind everything begins to make itself relevant to our journey. So that's just a snippet of a 24-minute decree. So I'm going to stop there because something is telling me to go live. And I will be going live tomorrow. And I'm going to go over those decrees because I feel that they're very vital. They're very vital not only for the Chronicles of a Nonprofit, but for the journey of our Kelly Appeal TV. And this is the reflection of what takes place in that criminal justice system. At any given moment, you have to protect yourself while waiting on bond. And I know there are some people out there right now that's listening to this podcast that is waiting on bond or knowing someone who is waiting on bond, waiting for a court hearing waiting for a sentencing, waiting for something that is going to be a dramatic change in your life. So this young woman in 2014, nine years ago, where 18,000 people listened to her decree, Shine Wisdom, that was the making of Dr. Darina Shine today. And these are things that These are remnants of forces that try to take this opportunity of what you're hearing, what you're listening to, what you're experiencing with me right now away 10 years ago. Tried to put a cap on my life to where I literally would never have been here to produce something this strong to you right now whether it was a chronicle, whether it was a decree, whether it was a mental health practice, whether it was a leadership opportunity or a business development course or a self-published confidence manual or a universal messages oracle program, you would never have gotten those things from me if I had not created those decrees. So we're going to go live tomorrow at, I'm going to say, might as well say six o'clock. Six will be a good time. And what I'm going to do is make it a live connection and just go over those decrees and just let you hear what was being manifested at the time. And you may hear the stress in my voice. You may hear the extreme confidence that came from somewhere. And it had to have come from the will within me to know 
that although my enemies may have felt and encamped around me, my higher source was greater than those than those forces. The forces that knew my weaknesses, the forces that knew my addictions, the forces that knew my people pleasing, you know, people pleasing. The forces that would not look at anyone for being anything other than loyal to me. The ignorance of my growth. That is the woman you're hearing there. In that fearful state, forcing herself to stand up against something she did not know. And that was my younger self 10 years ago extreme. And as I sit back as a leader of that young woman 10 years ago, pushing those decrees out, protecting the future me, that is an example of what we deal with in the highs and lows of the sector of business development and the highs and lows that come with being an entrepreneur in today's world. This is the real deal thing. You know, when you have to take your 401k and use it to clear your name, when you have to put your house up for sale to get out on bond, and then you bet not mess up because there are so many traps and snares that are set just so you won't get your money back. And we all get caught up. Even if we are the remnant of a family member getting caught up. We're in America. Everyone is touched by crime, violence, and drugs. And so that's what I wanted to leave with you tonight. I don't know what I'm even going to title this Chronicles here. I think I want to say the realest chronicle ever written (laughs) because it is for me. So I thank you so much for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast, getting to know Dr. Darina Shine and who I really am. I have nothing to hide because everything is all public knowledge anyway. So... Please don't hesitate to look at my scenario and really, really think as you journal through your entrepreneur journey on today's date, September the 28th, 2023, I want you to sit back and I want you to think about what is the most valuable point in your life that is going to make sure that you don't have to you know, go the route that I went. And what decrees are you going to set for yourself? (laughs) You know, it's just like going to college. Everybody doesn't need to go to college if someone has a degree. (laughs) Why should everyone waste all that money to learn the same thing? But yet empower yourself in your own passion to certify what you do to move that certification into something successful that is going to help a community, that is going to trigger that community. And that's what I want you to focus on tonight. So I thank you so much. And as always, be consistent. Be true to self. Be on time. And know you're the greatest thing going in the shoes you're rocking. Peace. And we'll see you next time.